welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, this is Leadership Redesigned. I'm just going to check that we've got um, people jumping on. Yes, we do. So um, just as normal, if you can um, post in the chat, if you haven't joined us before, we'd love you to just pop in the chat that you are um, here and where you are from. We're a very multicultural um, event tonight. We've got people from all over the globe. So um, we would love to hear where you are and just tell us whether you've been watching any of the events up until now or if this is your first event. And, um, and we'll, we'll just check all the tech is working before we kind of dive into our session today. Just to you, thank you for joining us. So um, we're from uh, various parts of the country. Okay, Caroline in Finland. Oh, sorry, Caroline in Johannesburg, South Africa. Carita in Finland. Caroline in Lincoln. Okay, welcome everybody. Oh, hi there, Rochelle from Bermuda. Good to see you back again. And Rhonda in Canada. Okay, so we can see you and, um, and see where you're from. So keep posting in the chat. We'll have the chat open for the next sort of five or so minutes while we welcome everybody. And then once we get into the actual event, um, it'll just be the panelists that can see um, the questions that you're posting or the comments that you're posting. So please do carry on interacting with us throughout the event. We love to hear what you're thinking. We love to hear what's resonating. Um, and towards the end of the panel, we certainly will be inviting you to ask us questions and get involved. So we definitely want this to be um, a conversation that you're involved in. So, um, so we've got another couple of people in the States, Christine in New York, Susan from Fire Island, welcome. So thank you so much for joining us. And um, this is Leadership Re Redesigned, and it's a, a conference that's been running since the 18th of May. And I'm Lisa Barnwell, I'm the Thought Leader, the Transformational Coach, and the Imperfect Leader. And the Leadership Redesign Conference was really a collaboration that came about when I reached out to a number of colleagues and just said, you know, I sense that leadership is going through quite a, um, a transformation at this current time. We need to be looking at the kind of leadership that we have in the workplace and how we're all showing up as leaders to help us through COVID-19. And would you be interested in being part of a conversation? So that was really how we, we started and it seems really apt to Kind of talk about that a little bit more in, in the event today because we're going to be talking about um basically um you know relationships and nurturing great relationships to power business and when we talk about relationships to power business we're talking about powering them together um it's def definitely very much about powering with as opposed to power over so what we're looking at in all of the conversations is um you know how we can show up with confidence, how we can show up with um, collaboration, how we can show up really as a collective to really solve the problems that are facing us at the moment. So today we're going to, um, as I say, be talking about relationships and I'm joined by an incredible panel um, from around the UK so um, and the US and um, yeah, and from Poland and from Italy. So we really are are all over and what I'll be doing is inviting everybody to respond to different questions and then we'll, we'll really sort of dive deep and, and get into a, a bigger discussion so welcome everybody thanks for joining us and, um, and I think we'll now get started so as I mentioned when I started um, thinking about this event I really did think you know how can I make this easy for myself how can I um, create something that's going to work and that's going to be interesting but my real issue at the very beginning was, was how can I create something with ease? And I reached out to a few people and it was because of the nature of my relationships with them, because of my um, connections with them that have been nurtured over a long time, it was actually very easy, I think, both for um, myself to think about who would be an interesting group of people to bring together, to get a diverse mix, but also who would be willing to to join and and it was actually i think for most people i mean obviously the panelists here will will say what they think but i think it was a pretty easy yes for most people and um, and i think that is a really great example of what happens when we develop good relationships there's that, that trust already there there's that understanding and you can then start to to really build you know valuable things through that so you know relationships can can make or break and, and 
what I've found is when we've got these expansive relationships where you can show up, you can be yourself. You know, I show up as the imperfect leader and, you know, that gives me a lot of permission to um, be myself, but also be, be brilliant and also be completely imperfect and, and muddle through. So, you know, what I want to, to do today is just really bring together these wonderful people and I'll ask them to share a little bit about their personal stories. But, um, you know, when we have great relationships, it can make work not feel like work so much. You know, it can make it feel like we can have those difficult conversations with far more ease than, you know, if we're talking to somebody where there isn't that connection, where there isn't that trust, there isn't that understanding. So, you know, I've shared a little bit about my story, but I thought it would be great to um, kick off today's um, sort of panel going, first of all, to um, Rebecca Hopper, um, Becky, and to talk to her a little bit about the relationships that, that she's built. And I know, um, Rebecca, you're working in a, um, you know, in a, a firm at the moment that's, that's dealing a lot with um, what's going on with COVID-19. And I know there's um, some confidentiality around what you're doing and, and everything else. But I'd love it if you could speak to um, the power of the relationships you have and how they're, they're serving you with what's going on at the moment. Sure. And, um, thank you for inviting me to this um, amazing event that you've that you've organised. Um, it, yes, it's a it, it's a great topic, and um, I'd perhaps like to answer the in the question in, in in two ways. Sort of first of all, looking sort of back slightly, um, and then looking at, at where we are now. Um, and just to kind of give a little bit of background about me, um, I, I'm a lawyer. Um, I, I work in the insurance industry and uh, I co-run a, a team of lawyers in, in London and we um, basically advise on matters for clients all over the world. So um, with the COVID-19 um, situation that we have at the moment, um, as you'll probably appreciate, a huge number of, of insurance claims. Um, lots of people are in pretty dire straits, either personally or through their businesses in terms of lost income. And so there's a whole plethora, you know, literally millions of claims being submitted um, into the industry. So the, the people that I generally work with are, are completely snowed under. Um, in terms of how, sort of where I've been and how I've got to this point, um, for me, the, the biggest thing that I love about my job is, is the relationships. Um, you know, yes, the, the work is is interesting it's it's challenging but at the end of the day it's it's really the people that you that you work with and, and I think most most industries are, are, are like that um, and I've been fortunate enough to, to sort of build friendships through 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 my work um, and, and a lot of those people I've known for quite a long time so that's sort of the the sort of the setup the history it's always you know I've always developed those relationships um, and also in terms of the teams that I've worked with, I've always encouraged them to, to make their own relationships and to try and meet people of the same age group and backgrounds or different backgrounds and, and just try and, and get to know as many people as, as they possibly can. Um, where we are at the moment now with COVID-19 and the clients are just completely overwhelmed, um, it's a very unique set of circumstances. So rather than being at home and actually having some time off, we're all working around the clock. Um, but all of our clients are in a very similar position in the sense that this is new, they're, they're snowed under, the issues are new, the issues are challenging, they're difficult. Everyone's really learning on the job in terms of you know, whether, whether insurance claims are going to be payable or not. There's a whole plethora of issues that no one's ever thought of before. So there is a vulnerability that comes through all of that. You know, nobody has the answers. So, so much of it is picking up the phone, speaking to the clients, checking in with how they are, you know, just actually checking with them on a, on a personal level, how they're getting on, how their families, um, having that personal interaction before you're talking about the, the work. Um, but because we're all doing it, from from a place of novelty as it were uh, we all have to be vulnerable you know we all have different perspectives different points of view but it's a fantastic opportunity for everyone to be open and honest and to share those ideas and really that's the way that we're getting through this um, the situation is evolving the work that we're doing is evolving and that's not just with clients it's with the team that i work with as well 
So um, we're better as a team. You know, we're, we're probably in some ways communicating even more than we did before. Just making sure if you haven't spoken to someone for a while, picking up the phone and checking in with them. Um, so I think it's sharing those experiences, building on existing relationships, developing new relationships. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a scenario that's very unique, but I think we'll, uh, if you look at it in, in, in that perspective, it's a way of really building for the future, both, both with those work relationships and also on a personal perspective. Yeah, I mean, I know that, um, you know, when we spoke before, um, when you just recently joined your company, you know, you, you spent quite a bit of time building relationships. Um, and that was something that I think was quite new to you, wasn't it, in, in a company sort of coming in and, and being invited to really nurture relationships. And I, I think that's really helped you now, hasn't it, with, with the work that you are doing? Yeah, no, no doubt about that. Um, I've, had, I've been in the industry for quite a long time, but moving job, it was in a new area and it, it really was important to build up relationships. And I was afforded the time to do that, to sort of reignite old relationships, build new relationships. And that's certainly been, if I hadn't had that time, I, I wouldn't have been in quite the same position I was when, when, when this event hit. So uh, yes, you, you can look back on it and really see how it's, how it's progressed. So it's putting the time in when you can. It, it will always come back to support you and nourish you in the future. Um, and I think that's that's something that's really important for companies, you know, to, to recognise that when they encourage, um, you know, that relationship building, it can really pay dividends when it needs to, so that when, you know, you're up against it, you've got those relationships so that you can have much more honest and, and connected conversations. So, yeah, thank you for that, um, you know, Becky. So, Moving on a little bit, um, you know, another part of relationships that we wanted to discuss today was, um, you know, about the strong relationships that we've nurtured with others and how they really can deepen when we have a, a connected relationship to ourselves. So, you know, it's very hard to build a connected relationship with somebody else if you're very guarded, if you're very closed, if you're not willing to be vulnerable yourself and you're kind of keeping um, a lot of what's going on very close to your chest. So it's a two-way um, thing I think to, to build up relationships so um, Pamela and Paula I, I wanted to, to sort of go to you I know you've built up and Anushka actually um, you've all built up really strong networks and, um, and strong relationships and I've known um, some of you for longer than others Paula I've known you probably the longest so, so let's maybe start with you um, you've got such an open and honest and, and beautiful way of connecting with people and as a result, you've created the most incredible network. I wonder if you can share a little bit about that. To us. Of course, and thank you for inviting me. And thank you for the beautiful words as well, Lisa. Um, I, was, um, I was nodding many times uh, when uh, Rebecca was speaking because she spoke about the importance of relationships and also the fact that we're better as a team. And I have to say that um, I celebrated five years of the Noi Club last Saturday. So five years ago, five years and a couple of days ago, um, I decided to take this leap of faith and uh, try to build something that was very close to my heart. I've always been um, interested in understanding uh, the relationship between genders, in particular when it comes to work. And uh, I've always been a feminist and I've always loved to nurture relationships with uh, my fellow female friends. And I wanted to do something for them and for me as well, uh, being a woman, being an Italian woman in particular, to make things better for everyone. And so I decided to create this community of women. It's called the Noi Club because I'm Italian and Noi means us. With the purpose of avoiding any conflict uh, and any uh, sense of competition and bringing everyone together to make sure that if you have a project, if you have an idea and you feel very lonely in your journey, with the help of the collectivity, you can really not only thrive, but also contribute to other people's success. So I think that for me, connections and nurturing connections has been a mantra. Because without the community, the Noi Club wouldn't exist and my dream wouldn't exist. Um, another point that I wanted to make about this uh, conversation is also the importance of um, 
connections beyond borders. And by that, I mean that when I started researching uh, to create this community, I found myself um, thinking, well, I'm not actually recreating anything new. There's a lot of communities out there already. But I, what I found out was that obviously every community was looking at the niche for obvious reasons, because you have, you know, you create your own tribe and you follow your, your tribe based on, you know, similar interests. So I decided to go a little bit against the current and against also what every uh, startup uh, teacher tells you. Instead of finding my niche, I tried to cast the net as wide as possible. Um, because I thought mm, there's a lot of groups already who look after maybe just women in startups or who look after only women in corporate. And I am actually a hybrid myself because I have my corporate job in a consulting firm and I also live in the startup world. So I said I wouldn't be I wouldn't be, it wouldn't feel natural to me to only cater to a group of people. And so actually the Noi Club reunites every woman who has an idea, regardless of where they come from. And what I found out is exactly what Beck, Rebecca said before, you know, you can get even better if you have a team and this team, if it's diverse itself, it's even better. And so I think that it's always important to think about creating connections that really feel good to you regardless of where you come from or regardless of the job you have or the world you live in, because maybe other people can just enrich you even if they are from a completely different background. Um, so I'll pause here. <laughs> yeah, and, and what I'd love to pick up on is, um, you know, I've known you those five years. I, I think I was um, one of the earlier members and, you know, my life and your life have changed quite dramatically since, you know, we first got together. But I've watched this group grow and I think you're about 3,000 strong now. Um, and it's a, a gorgeous community. There's such a lot of um, support and energy and everything amongst the women. But what I'm really interested in is the sort of personal journey that you've been on and how it's helped your career and your sort of personal relationship with yourself to deepen as you're, you know, nurturing these other women, how it's, um, you know, affected your personal growth as well. Because I've seen certainly quite a change, but I'd love to know, um, you know, from your perspective, so that we can we can see the context of how having a side hustle when you're, you know, doing a main job has actually really helped in so many ways and on so many levels. It has incredibly helped me uh, in in my corporate journey as well. I have to say. And it's interesting because I am coming from a sector, the one of consulting, which is made of specific rules and um, things have been done in a certain way for a long time. However, um, we are also looked at as the people who make change happen. We need to be always ahead of the curve because we are consulting clients to you know, enable them to, to do better. Um, I have the luxury of working for a company that is very forward looking, but what I've always seen, even before I change companies, because you have uh, you have known me in my uh, old uh, old consulting days, and now I'm in another firm. Um, what I found was that if you are able to nurture your relationships at work, and if you can really show up in your true self at work, which is I know very difficult, especially in a highly male dominated world, for example, like where I come from. If you manage to do that, and if you spend some time working on your true human side and how you show up at work, people will follow you in the end if you have something interesting for them. And so what I, what I tried to nurture throughout the year was uh, certain relationships that would enable me to pursue my dream, even if I had a full-time job. And so that was the first thing that I tried to do. Um, and it, I have to say, it didn't come, it came, it didn't come effortlessly, but at the same time, it wasn't super difficult to do because once you have a passion and you really show that that passion can bring you places and can actually make you better as a person, people will believe in you even more because they say, they see that you have a bigger drive. So the, once the first step was done and I had some people on my side who could actually help me pursue my dream, um, the second thing that I that I learned to do was also, again, like I said before, not creating boundaries between my between my first and my second hat. I'm wearing two hats every day, 
And people were like, but aren't you worried that actually at work, people will find out that you're also doing this other thing. You have this big side hustle, which is taking up a lot of your time. And I was like, maybe, but I mean, it's still worth the, the try. And so what I did was openly sharing about my passion with more and more people. Turns out that if you have a community of women and these women are experts on their own subject matters, they may actually be very helpful for the company you work for. So I am super excited that I have now women who come from the Noi Club who are in our, cor- in our corporation, in our company. Um, we are collaborating with free- freelancers that are co- who are coming from the Noi Club. We invite some of our Noi Club members to our um, corporate events and we invite them as speakers. So there's a lot of serendipity. Uh, that is created when you show up as your true self, you show it to other people what you have to offer and you ask them to be part of the journey. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Paola. And um, I, I love how you followed your passion, but you know, what's, what's sort of shone through for me has been you know, these, these great relationships that you build and you, you seem to build them very effortlessly. And I know that you know, creating a network of, of the size that you have and holding down a, a busy day job and, and being a parent as well, you know, there's a lot that has to give. But I think because you show up as yourself so authentically in all of those areas, it isn't the, the juggle that it could be. Um, and I think that's what's, what's been really interesting. So, yeah, thank you for sharing your story. And, and Pamela, I wanted to, to kind of move to you. I know that you've also built up an incredible network. Um, and I want to sort of explore this um, sort of concept that when you, um, you know, go on a personal journey yourself and you open up to a deeper relationship and being more authentic and more open yourself, how it helps you to be more creative and be more connected to the people that, that you're reaching out to in a business sense. Can you speak to that for a bit, please? Yeah, no, and, and thank you so much, um, Lisa, for having me on this panel. It's, great, it's a great honor to be here with um, you and all the other panelists. Um, actually, um, I've had my business for 17 years. It's called Biotech Vendor Services, and we put on scientific events at biotech companies to connect the suppliers to the end users. We call it um, speed dating um, for scientists. And in addition to that, um, I've also am following my passion to empower women in STEM, as well as us working together as a community both women and men, and I created um, a series called Women Breaking the Barriers of Science and the Male Champions, um, and have had these series throughout um, the US as well as um, empowerment workshops to help people in science break through their internal glass ceilings. And actually, when I was thinking about um, the whole process of networking, I realized, um, you know, at the beginning, you know, I was a little bit more reserved. I'm, I, everybody thinks I'm super extroverted, et cetera, but, but I, I was better with one-on-one situations or small groups. And actually through networking at the Pittsburgh airport, it's how I landed my first job out of um, college. And uh, it was just this random back and forth of the lady at the table. And she said, can I come join you? And I said, sure. And then she says, we're looking to hire people to become computer programmers. And I told her I didn't know anything about computers. And uh, we just carried on with our conversation, went to London for the summer, and then came back. And I said, hey, I didn't get a job in Wall Street yet. Um, can, can we continue our conversation? And she sent me straight to the hiring manager. And I went to work for EDS um, for 12 years. And we actually had business cards. But... I would say maybe I gave out 10 of them in the whole 12 years because you were mostly talking to clients or, you know, your, your colleagues and there wasn't really a need. And then I moved back to San Diego and I met my neighbor and she said there was a need um, for these scientific events in the biotech um, arena. And um, I said, well, I don't know anything about biotech. And and sort of what my motto is, do it despite the fear. I, I kept going into these areas where I didn't know much about it, but I, I, I did it. And the first networking event that I went to, um, actually multiple ones, I was out of my element. I was really nervous. Um, 
And then what happened is eventually I bought the blue suit. I said, okay, I'm gonna look like I belong. And then I realized how I was like, okay, I need to go up to the Pfizer group and I need to go up to the Merck group and, and I'm gonna introduce myself. And it was definitely a muscle that you had to build. It was not something that came naturally, um, but I kept doing it and I kept doing it. And then as you went through, you knew more and more people. And at this point, I have like 17,000 connections in LinkedIn. I'm really well connected and really well known in the industry. Um, but that was built through authentic, vulnerable relationships. It was never about what can I sell to you? What can I give you? It was, tell me about your kids. Um, you know, um, tell me a bit more about yourself. It was building those relationships um, you know, very authentically. And then when I built this um, Women Breaking the Barriers of Science in the Male Champions um, series, that was at the point where I realized collaboration was so important. Um, literally, there was an outpouring from the community to help. People helped get speakers, etc. I would say prior to that, I was really used to working in isolation and didn't always reach out. But um, through a program called Feminine Power Mastery, where we meet on a regular basis with other women, we really um, help to raise each of our visibilities. So, so that's kind of been my experience with networking, and it's 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 so critical and so important. Yeah, thank you, Pamela. And I think that's that's what we um, you know all understand is that networking can feel really. Um, uncomfortable if it's been done with a, a sort of energy of what can I sell you, what can I get from you, what can I take, you know, what can I sort of push onto you. And when you show up and just, you know, have conversations with people, that's where the development really happens. That's where the ideas spark. That's where the, um, you know, the, the connections seem to, to be forged. And um, moving on to you, um, Noosh, you work in a, an area that I find completely fascinating. And I know that um, there's something happening today in the, the space world that you're very excited about and perhaps you'll share with, with everybody because I'm not sure it's going to be something everybody knows about. But you've built up or you're building up this really interesting network of, of women around space. Can you talk to us a little bit more about that? Hi everyone, thank you so much for having me Lisa. It's a pleasure to join you all and thank you to everyone tuning in. I see some familiar faces, so shout out to the uh, Warrior Women community. It's great to see you here. Um, yeah, so I, um, I've always felt like a bit of an outlier and I probably had a very portfolio background. I've worked across politics, the Olympics, um, science and startups, and now very much following my passion, I've established myself in the space sector. And for everybody who is tuning in an hour after this sort of wraps up, um, uh, we have the first launch from NASA and SpaceX. So it's, a, it's actually a public and private partnership, the first historic launch that it's going to be taking two American astronauts to the ISS. Um, so it's a super exciting day. And it's kind of interesting that it's all aligned today because the whole reason I got inspired to sort of professionally align myself into the space community, number one, it was my passion as a child. I wanted to be an astronaut, something that so many of us as we're children, we sort of imagine what the future might hold for our sort of, you know, future selves. But growing up in London, I had no access to, you know, a space program. I did get to go to space camp and summer space schools, which were amazing, but I left that all behind in my childhood as I entered my sort of professional career and it was applying for something called a NASA social which is something that's taking part for the first time even as I speak as a global public event to encourage people to get involved in communicating science across social media about the launch and I ended up being invited to the launch of a um, satellite uh, at Vandenberg Air Force Base by NASA and so that really kicked off my passion into trying to discover and follow a career in the space sector and carving my, my place. But it's so funny, I previously for about 14 years before that worked as a fundraiser for a political party and building relationships with donors and people and actually challenging people or hearing from an upset membership grassroots base at that time 
really the core to me of like building relationships with people who would end up maybe signing a donation away to me was really understanding them. And I think for me, my biggest skill is sense making and building relationships. And there is something so beautiful in being vulnerable with people when you share an engagement or conversation, particularly when it's around a charity that you support or a cause, because I think that values and aligning values, whether that's to a goal, is really important um, or whether it's for a cause and I've operated as someone who manages partnerships for startups as much as running in parallel my my sort of like space company as a solopreneur but then also being a contractor and sort of having this portfolio um, background of work where I've worked recently with a biotech company based out of Cambridge and the reason why I've been able to be like a chameleon is that I've always um, been like Paola. I was very honest with each of my um, partners and clients that I've worked with about why I wanted to work with them. And for me, the goal has always been to learn, to continue to learn so that I'm always growing um, in my own self-development towards building what naught will become. Because at the moment, I haven't got it all figured out yet. I do notice, do notice though, that there isn't as much um, diversity of perspectives in some of the space events that I've gone to around the world. And actually during lockdown now, being here in London, I've been able to still be part of the community and have events that we can come together over technology and platforms such as Zoom. And it's been, it's been really thought provoking because I love face-to-face -face meetings with people, but I also care about our planet. And I really care about what we do now that the world has sort of been on pause and how that can reflect in the world that we want to kind of like rebuild or transform in whatever way we can. And so it's also been quite a challenging time. I mean, I'm sitting here with a blazer, there are shorts on underneath and I think we're all doing that at the moment with Zoom, right? Like it's like business on top and like pajamas at the bottom. And I'm sharing that with you because that's the reality of so many of us, wherever we might be in the world. And it's it's okay because I don't have it all figured out. I don't actually know what's going to happen in like the short to mid term. I'm I'm able to spend a lot of time researching and deep diving and really trying to be inquisitive with my network um, and having catch ups with people. And I think this is a really important time to look at the network that you already have and maybe to people that you might want to um, connect with. You know, everyone's got their phone in their hand right now. You can message someone, maybe it's on LinkedIn or Twitter or another social media platform, and they might have your attention. And so it's, I echoed the comment I made earlier about being fearful. Like I, I used to, uh, Pamela, I think it was you, and I was like, I always used to be scared to DM someone or follow them and they followed me back. And I was like, oh my God, what do I do now? And I forced myself to DM them and just say, hey, I really love that thing that you've talked about at that conference. And I think there's something really beautiful that people want to know why you're drawn to them because that's the beginning of like what a relationship um, sort of can flourish. And yeah, I just wanted to say to everyone tuning in, like it's really okay if you're not okay right now. And it's really great that you're joining us this evening to be part of this conversation and join people because not everyone has it sorted out right now. And that's okay because we're all trying to figure it out. Some of you may have needed a lot of courage to like join us. And I just want to say thank you because it's, it's a big step in you recognizing that you want to change something up. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> Thanks, Nish, and I, I love your enthusiasm. And I think, you know, recognizing that, that we all need relationships, we, know, we all need this human connection, and especially at this particular time, you know, when we are all distant, um, you know, physically from each other, you know, this is when our connections need to be stronger. And I think being able to create those, those deep connections, those honest connections, you know, even when they're remotely, takes some skill, and not everybody, um, you know, I think has adapted to, to these sort of Zoom connections as much as others. And I think the more that, you know, we can build the relationships both with ourselves and with others, the stronger those connections will be. So I think it's really, um, you know, such a learning in there. So thank you for sharing. And um, thank you, um, Dash and Anella, for, for being so patient. And I'd really love to bring you into the conversation now. And, you know, one of the things with relationships is... Um, you know, often we can build relationships with people that we know well and, and people that are like us. And um, I know Ellie, you've got a, a sort of project going on 
with that at the moment. But I think it's also really interesting when we build relationships with people who have opposing views and who are different to us so that we can learn to be more diverse and inclusive. We can learn to um, understand other perspectives and we don't just see the world from our own sort of, um, you know, sheltered views. So um, I don't know who would like to, to pick up on the conversation first, um, Anna or Daoshin, but just to speak a little bit more about the work you've been doing, where you've um, connected both with people like you and, and people who are, are very different. Maybe I will allow Doshan, <laughs> our one man in this group. <laughs> Dashan, do you want to, to pick up on that and just share the work that you've been doing? I know you've got a really interesting um, sort of journey that you've been on. And, and we met, you know, some time ago when you were um, supporting women in politics. So uh, but I'd love you to, to share a bit more of your journey now and your, your thoughts on, on creating diverse relationships. Well, I think, well, firstly, thank you very much, Lisa. And thanks to everyone who shared their, their insights and personal insights on the, on the session so far. I guess the, the, for me, the journey can be summed up very similarly in terms of succeed, serve and share. So the three guiding principles of me, we, we talk about success and moving on in life, but equally and as importantly is to serve and share. And serving and sharing could be serving your community and obviously in the current uncertain environment we're in, sharing and serving really does come to the fore and helping those out who may be more underestimated than you or in certainly more precarious positions so it's three words that have guided me and i, I won't bore people with my, my journey um, and i know you can read about that but using those principles of succeed serve and share gets you to a position where when we're talking about building relationships and difference valuing difference even more and putting in the hard work and the understanding first to certainly appreciate those relationships, possibly go through the pain of learning and experience difference or diversity, and then coming out better, not just for a special interest group, but for everybody. And this is the crux of the equation. A lot of the work, you know, when we first met, um, I was and I still part of a campaign to get more women into Parliament, into UK Parliament, and we've been phenomenally successful. We actually had nine MPs um, elected in the December 2019 general election, which to put in context is one and a half percent of the UK Parliament to re-elected and seven new MPs as a result of the work we've done. And a lot of people look at me and go, well, if they, if they don't see me, they go, Dalshan, we'd love to meet her. And, um, they get a bit of a shock when they meet me, um, given my name, and, um, where I look. And they, they think I should be focused on a different group not necessarily women, but they'll look at me or they'll figure out something for my name. And the factor here is difference pays dividends, diversity benefits all, not just the group. So I benefit massively. My daughter, who you probably saw run into the call earlier on, benefits massively from having far greater quality in UK Parliament, far greater women from all walks of life coming into UK Parliament. We all benefit greatly from that. It's not just a woman's issue. It's a societal, a business, a political issue, which has advantages in, in all walks of life. Just want to pick up on a point from, I think Pamela mentioned earlier about networking and the early experience of networking, where you, where you, where we all are generally very tribal. We find people like us, people who hear us, people who laugh at our jokes, but actually, Moving out of that comfort zone is where we get true value, and I think we can nurture great relationships. I love it when people disagree with me. I love it when people challenge me. But there's a cultural aspect there, and I think when you talk about leadership redefined, we've, we've got to come down to the, the aspect of comfort. And um, I use this slide, and it, it can throw some. We are very comfortable being comfortable. But the true magic happens when we're comfortable with the uncomfortable and when we're uncomfortable with the comfortable. Because only then will we move out of this, this kind of safe, steady, secure, left brain, rational world and we'll move into 
what I call a magical quadrant on a, on a simple matrix that I've developed, but um, a magical quadrant where we can truly be open to new ideas. When we talk about honesty and authenticity, actually live it and not just talk it, because it's the most bland value on any corporate or personal set of values or statements you'll see. It's the actual living of it and being true to yourself because you're not hiding behind the culture. You're not pretending to be someone you aren't. It's just who you are and people can accept that or not. And that's fine. But we'll smile and we'll build upon it and move on. Yeah. And that difference is really appreciated. And that's where the real magic happens when we talk about a lot of the change that probably, you know, Anushka highlighted in, in her journey and certainly the work she does and Pamela as well. A lot of the transformation, but let's be honest, we're all going to be facing when we come out of this um, lockdown scenario and we hit the reset button. It's, it's not normal. It's not going to be a new normal. It really is an opportunity to reset. So we can be more transformative, more disruptive, more innovative. But to do that and to build on the relationships, we really have to be just uncomfortable with the status quo, uncomfortable with comfort and really getting more comfortable with the uncomfortable. Because we've been through hell, certainly over the last eight weeks, and many of us that have had either personal experiences or you know, with extended family or extended friends who have, have suffered greatly, um, have certainly seen that. And we're just gonna have to be a lot more open and a lot more comfortable with the unknown, with the uncomfortable, and really reach out into different areas. So that's uh, just a more philosophical view for me, and, as the discussion goes on, I'm happy to go into some of the specifics of the work we've done. But probably, Elizabeth, over to you, I guess. Yeah, and I um, thank you for that, Delshin. And, and certainly since I've known you, you've always built up really interesting relationships with, with you know, different groups. And I'm, I see you as somebody who's got a very big heart and who's very um, interested in, in lots of different people and I know um, you know some of that stems from from your, your background and your upbringing but I think it's also just coming from from being a, a curious man and who wants to be a good father who wants to be a good husband and you know and I think you know the relationships that we develop can really sort of speak to the kind of people that we are um, and and sort of how we want to live our lives and so you know bringing bringing Ella in now to the conversation um, you know, I'd love you to talk a little bit, you know, we talk about it's important to have these different relationships, but I think also um, when you're working in an environment where you feel like perhaps you're not um, similar to many other people, sometimes it's important to create those safe spaces and those networks. And I know in, in your role, um, you know, that's something that you've been sort of instrumental in doing. And I wonder if you can speak a little bit to to that and the sort of benefit of, of also sort of staying, you know, or connecting with people who are like you. Yeah, so definitely. <laughs> I will speak to this and yeah, first of all, thank you, Lisa and and and, and rest my beautiful panel. Yeah, for having me and yeah, I, I like what, what Dashon said about really uh, feeling comfortable with uncomfortable and I re really learned this. Yeah, I needed to learn this, doing this job, what I'm doing. And um, I'm doing troubleshooting. Yeah, this is, this is the, the most, uh, most of the time I, I'm doing the troubleshooting. And that means, you know, uh, I meet with people who, who are in, in trouble. Yeah, who the brewery, which is the, uh, in trouble, the, the team, which is uh, panicking, uh, which has a lot of fears. Yes, which which has a real big problem. Yeah, so as as microbiologist, uh, as a specialist in the field, I'm I'm going there and, and I'm supporting them in this professional part. But also sometimes I, I must say, very often I'm I'm acting as a you know psychologist, as a mother, <laughs> as a as a professional friend, as a coach. Yeah. So so this is really what what Lisa what you said. Yeah. It's it's really the the moment where uh, creating the safe space for for people is is uh, crucial. Uh, and additionally, uh, it's apart from creating the safe safe space, it's also 
just this kind of understanding that we are uh, in it together, yeah, and we are all together in it, yeah. So we create the relationships uh, in this crisis team, uh, me with them, but also them between uh, between uh, yeah the members of the team. And actually, usually in this kind of situations in the team, yeah, we have the people from the shop floor and and the people like you know the rural managers or, or um, presidents of the company, yes. Yeah? So and all the all in between. So this is a huge variety of people with different levels of uh, you know knowledge, experience, also different levels of of uh, leadership. So it's it's really important to bring these people together and and. Uh, to create these relationships and what is what I've learned what is really one common thing for for all these people from all these different levels is it's really they they really want to be heard they want they want to be seen for for who they are yeah they want to see to be seen for for the experts in their in their part, particular fields and also they want to be respected yeah so so these are this what all this elements that that are really very important uh, in creating the relationships yeah and and i must say i, I for for 25 years of, of working uh, in heineken i'm you know, i was traveling all over the world yeah from, from russia till uh, to 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 uh, south africa and all all countries in between and people are everywhere the same yeah they want to be seen they want to be heard and they want to be respected so I think when we we as leaders when we understand this yeah we, it will be very easy for us to create the relationships and i must say yeah i was i was not that good <laughs> at, at relationships uh, in the past and uh, usually i was i was yeah especially in my first years i was really like a you know this <laughs> warrior <laughs> one person uh, warrior which was trying to you know to to fight my way through through the corporate world yeah i started as a as a lab technician in the micro lab yeah and 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 then i got <laughs> where where i am now and and uh, every time where uh where i was moving step by step yeah I, I yeah i was comfortable for a certain period and then i i, I started realizing that that I feel too comfortable in the place, yes? Yeah? So I wanted to expand, yeah? I wanted to grow and I want, wanted to also grow my impact with the, with the gifts and tools, yeah, that, that I have. So, yeah, yeah so I think, I think this is what I've learned on my way and also working with, uh, with these different critical situations. And, and just sort of picking up on that, I know there's, um, just to sort of give it some context, so, you know, obviously Heineken's an enormous company, and so, you know, during the, the sort of COVID, um, you've been involved in a, a sort of crisis response group, and, mm -hmm. you know, have, have got to know lots of different people in the company that you perhaps didn't know before, and then you're also involved in a, a sort of um, informal network group, almost, that, that's been mm -hmm. going on to support women um, within Heineken. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, it was interesting for me when we spoke about the sort of different relationships that you're building now. And as you say, you're, you're used to in the past, perhaps working in a, a role where you had your small team, but you were kind of in, in isolation a little bit. And now you're part of these two um, kind of groups and, and have really sort of expanded your relationships um, mm -hmm. with people across the business, both with people who are very different to you and, and also with giving a safe space for, for women like you. Yeah. So yeah. Thanks for for uh, for pointing this out because yeah, really actually I <laughs> I'm running three three different totally different groups now and and really yeah. First one was women like us, which was really support. Yeah, the idea was really to support uh, women in corporate to you know to to be leaders. Yeah, to to claim their leadership roles. Yes, and to to show up and to to be more visible and and uh this was really true encouragement for showing the the uh, 
examples of, of other women yeah, who, who managed to, uh, to thrive in the corporate uh, world and just uh, presenting their journey. Uh, the second group, uh, actually this is the group of, of experts. So, so we have, yeah, in, in Heineken is a beautiful organization, so multi, you know, <laughs> international and multicultural. Uh, and uh, yeah, we have something which is called centers of excellence. Yes, uh, since since two years more, so we we are building these centers of excellence, and I'm leading one of one of this. It's Kaijin in brewing, and uh, within this center of excellence, uh, I'm leading yeah 25 people now from from all over over the world. So these are the experts in 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 the field. Yes, so so we are working together. You know working on the standards, giving the support, giving the, um, uh, yeah, I would say advices, but, but actually what we are doing, what is the most important doing this is, is really we are creating these connections and relationships among the group. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you know, everybody is at their own end of the world feeling kind of alone with their own problems, yes? So having this kind of um, multinational, <laughs> multicultural group, yeah, that they, yeah, we can learn from each other, yeah? And we can, uh, we can support each other and we can, you know, pick up the phone any, any time we need and, and we feel connected through, through all these kilometers <laughs> of, of the world. So, so this, is, this is really the beauty. Yeah, this is really the beauty, and I, I'm so <laughs> happy and excited to to, to lead this team. Uh, and actually, I, I mentioned the third team, and you know, <laughs> paradoxically, I'm a microbiologist. So uh, at a certain moment, somebody uh, thought, "Okay, Ella can can lead a crisis team uh, of COVID." Uh, so 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 yes. So so actually, yeah, my last two months were really fully. Uh, fully busy, fully covered with with this subject, and uh, and this was another huge experience of of leading and and supporting the people in this very difficult crisis crisis situation. And actually, yeah, I've learned for the years that yeah, the, what is the most important is actually prevention. Yes, so so uh, working within this team, we were really. Uh, trying to implement all preventive measures to, you know, to avoid the problem and to get prepared for the problem if it comes. We managed, yes, and uh, we managed to do this. We are we are now uh, well prepared and feeling safe also within the group. Yeah, because because again, um, this was in total it was eighty people again from from different locations from from different um places in poland i would say uh yeah and and we feel like like one team yeah yeah and that's a lot of relationships to navigate that's a lot of people <laughs> to bring together and i think when you're bringing relationships um people together in, in kind of crisis situations you know it takes a lot of skill to kind of hold that space and and to facilitate connection and to facilitate um, everybody kind of getting along and focusing on the job in hand. So, you know, I'm really conscious of the time and that we want to bring in as many kind of questions as we can. I, I'm really grateful to everybody on the panel for sharing, um, you know, sort of their experiences of relationships. And I think, you know, we can see how, how you know, relationships are so crucial to how we, we live our lives, how we, you know, build our businesses, how we expand you know, in the workplace, but it's in, incredibly important um, to, to do it from a place that's, that's authentic and that resonates with you. So um, whilst we wait and see if there are any questions, if anybody's got anything, just post in the chat um, any questions that you have for any of the panel, or if you want to um, unmute yourself, um, or will unmute you rather, but if you want to put your hand up um, and ask a question, we can do that. But has anybody got anything that they want to share just listening? to each other um, that, that sort of really resonated with them to, to pick up on this topic of, of building, um, you know, and nurturing great relationships to power our business. So yeah, Becky, I'd love to come back to you. 
Yeah, I'd just like to add something because it's such an interesting discussion. And I think where I was coming from initially, I was talking about building relationships. It was outside of where I'm working. It was with clients and, and, and building those relationships. Um, but really such a huge part of it is, 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 is the people that you're working with. So I, I joined my current company about 18 months ago and it's a, a huge firm. Um, it's global. Um, I've never worked in such a large firm before and it's quite easy going into that environment to feel a bit lost. Um, you know, yes, you're with your immediate team, but there's a huge network out there um, that, that you can tap into. And I think it's, um, you know, I think one, one person said to me, actually those people who enjoy the work the most and who succeed the most within these large organizations are people who have developed the biggest not biggest isn't necessarily the, the, the best way of putting it, but the most comprehensive and the strongest relationships. Um, so that was something that I really focused on. Uh, and I'd never really done that before. I, I'd, I'd gone into work, done my job, uh, worked with a small team, um, but but had really you know, sort of been quite self-contained. And as, and as a result, quite isolated, I would say, if I look back on it, um, but coming to a new environment and having that that um, that suggestion um, made, and you know, and actually coming into this this firm and really wanting to extend those networks, I can now see eighteen months on just how beneficial that has been um, to have people you can call on, that you can reach out to, that you can be vulnerable with, and and ask for help, um, and also offering help to other people. They will then reciprocate and offer it back to you. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to put that that additional piece in because I think I'd really just focused on the external relationships and say really from hearing everyone's discussion, the internal relationships within our own firms and corporations and where we work is so important. Yeah, thanks, Becky. And um, just to actually um, pick up, hang on one sec, Noosh, just on um, a question here from Audrey, which kind of leads very much into that. What advice? Um, would we have for someone who has a very negative workplace and is trying to change the culture and trying perhaps to, to build stronger relationships? Um, did you want to, to just mention something, Noosh, and then we'll go to Paula on, the, on that um, response? Yeah, it was just to follow up on what Becky was talking about there, and it's whether you're um, networking with people within your organization or looking for external allies or working within networks and tribes of people, it's really important that they know what you're looking to do and what you want to achieve. And just, you know, there are so many times that I asked to meet someone for a coffee and I never knew what the outcome was that I wanted from that coffee. So it was this like very polite coffee and social, but it didn't actually get me where I wanted to go because I never found the words to say them. Um, so it was just, it was something about just being really clear and mindful about what you want. And also it helps people know how you're shaping and changing based on what your updates are from that point. So it's just a nice kind of like little way for people to be able to also help you. Yeah, I think recognizing that relationships are, are two way and, and being respectful of people's time and people's energy, not just constantly saying, oh, can I pick your brains? Can you help me with this? Can you do this? Um, you know, it, it's very much, you know, that give and receive, as Becky was saying, you know, people are there for you. And then what, what can you give back? So, but um, thanks for that. But moving on to, to Audrey's question, Paolo, how would you um, like to respond that obviously touched something in you when you, you heard about a negative workplace? Yeah, and Audrey, uh, I'm very, I'm very grateful to you for raising that question because it's rare that things like this don't happen, right? Uh, usually, if you are interested in the topic of networking, and I've also seen another comment before uh, from Roxanne mentioning that her knowledge of networking isn't necessarily what networking should really be because she had a negative experience, and I actually think that there's a big difference between networking and creating relationships. Um, but to your question, my very practical piece of advice would be start as small as possible, which means that, of course, you shouldn't have conversations with yourself all the time. But I am sure that someone else in your organization, someone else in your company is feeling the same that you are feeling and wants to change, maybe in a slightly different way. Maybe these people are more shy than you are, or maybe you are more shy than, than them, and you will just realize that when you speak to them. But 
especially when you see such a big barrier ahead of you because the culture is not helping you, the purpose of the company is not helping you, think about the smallest possible step that you can make with someone else. And again, I am sure, even if I don't know where you work, I am sure someone else will feel similar to you and start from there. Because what you want to achieve is creating a little ripple, a little ripple effect that can then cause a much bigger change. And maybe in the first months or in the, even in the first years, um, the, you know, if you have big expectations, they will not be met. But you will, you will start somewhere. And to actually create a movement, all it takes is one person and then another one. So it may sound a bit fluffy, but it's actually very concrete. And I have experienced that as well. If you want to change something, if you want to move to a different direction, it doesn't necessarily have to be, um, you know, something that is related to changing completely the company. But if you feel something is not right, just find one ally. And it's all that it takes to start something. And then you, you will navigate much better any potential hurdle or blocker that you will find on your way. Thanks, Paula. And um, I know yesterday we were talking about cultures and changing cultures. Um, so you might want to um, catch up on that one, Audrey, as well, because we were talking a lot about um, improving cultures to create better workplaces. But I, I would echo, um, you know, Paola's advice there and, you know, building relationships so that you don't feel um, that you're on your own with an issue, I think is very important. And it might even be that you're building relationships out of your particular company, but with people within your industry as well. So you can understand is what you're experiencing um, unique to your company or is it something that, that is kind of a, a norm in your particular industry so that you get a bit, bit more sort of insight in it and um, you know look at whether whether you're a good fit for that organization as well um, I think that's something that's going on for a lot of people at the moment is um, you know really weighing up the, the culture that they're a part of and the relationships that they have around them whether they feel you know part of a family in their, their business or not. So Ella, yeah, would you like to, to respond to that? Yes, actually, yes. <laughs> it's, it's a huge topic because, uh, yeah, and it's also very personal, I must say, because, you know, when I started working in my company, we were, you know, this post-communistic, very hierarchical company. Uh, and yeah, and the relationships and the culture was, was not good that time. Yeah, I'm talking 25 years ago. So for me, it was, yeah, it was really difficult. Yeah, even if I was, you know, nice, kind person and I, I had nice relationships with, you know, with my surrounding, yeah, it was really difficult to, to change the culture. I simply didn't have influence. Yeah, I was kind of too small, you know, I didn't have the, you know, the right position i would say to to have the the impact and in influence so actually i think in this situation what what is yeah there are there are several choices of course yeah you can leave the company and find another environment this is also possible yeah but but what i did that time actually i found the way uh, I, whom i i could uh have a good relationship and uh, Thanks to these authentic relationships, they they saw me. They saw my my you know values. My um, yeah, they 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 just saw saw me, and then in time they also supported me to you know to to move forward yeah on my career and and gaining bigger and bigger impact. Yeah, so so this this can be the way, but I can tell you it's very difficult to do it to do it as a, as a one person. But we can be role models, yeah, and we can start with this being role models and being kind and behaving right, I would say. <laughs> Thanks, Ella. And, um, and I think there is that sort of show up, you know, and treat people as you would like to be treated. And, and when we give off that energy, then I think we become sort of more attractive to others and we, we bring sort of others like us in, into our sort of orbit. So I can see there's a, a question here for Pamela, um, talking about the current challenges that women have in breaking through the glass ceiling in the science industry. So just if you can speak to that and, and the sort of relationship part of that, what, what, um, what advice you would give? Um, yeah, so in 2018, there was actually um, a 300 page report done on 
um, academic research um, institutes, and it showed that um, the biotech industry was second to military in the number of sexual harassment abuses. And so it was very prevalent. If you were in medical school, for example, you had a 50% chance of getting sexually harassed. In addition to that, um, as far as getting credits on, on, on work, as well as, um, you know, there was big pay differentiations between women and men in, in the science field. And so some of what I was doing was having programs to really highlight um, how do we take action um, related to, to that to make a difference um, in, in the industry? Because it, it, it's, there really is, uh, it's, it's actually the number one reason that women leave the field of science is, is because of this discrimination and harassment. And so how can, how can building relationships help them? You know, that's what we're talking about today is, is you know, nurturing great relationships. So how would you, how would you kind of link that in? And Daoshinye will come to you next. Um, yeah, so, 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 so um, basically, I, I think it's really important to have really strong mentors um, within the workplace where you develop great relationships. Um, you also need to be able to express your voice and, and your needs within an organization and really have champions within the organization. And that's where it's really important. Um, because trying to do it on your own sometimes is difficult, especially in a big corporation. Yeah, thank you. And um, Darshan, do you want to just sort of pick up on that topic? Yeah, I think on, on the, the actual question regarding women in STEM, there's this direction of Palmer, but if we look at the, cha the challenge here, that phenomenally talented, high quality people are not getting the opportunity they deserve generally because of the culture, referring back to question one, or us, the gatekeepers, whether it's bias, discrimination, or what have you, but the gatekeepers not recognizing that talent because the talent does not look like us, or talk like us, or think like us. Big mistake, obviously, because we're, we're losing out on phenomenal talent that will push us in different directions. But in terms of breaking that ceiling, I mean, I've, I've move slightly away from mentoring and coaching and I talk more about championing and sponsoring and really helping people navigate the environment particularly with the work that I do with women on boards and other underestimated populations on boards is to help them navigate and where I can sponsor and where I can champion I will because frankly most of the talent I meet don't need the mentoring don't need the coaching they're way past me if we're honest about it and hence we come back to culture honesty and authenticity because if we're honest about it why am i coaching some women's group why am i mentoring i'm the problem i need the coach and i need the mentoring as a gatekeeper possibly but really what i should be doing is championing and navigating helping navigate and sponsoring that talent as I would do with one of my buddies on a golf course or somebody who's tapped me on the shoulder. So that is one way. Let's be honest and authentic about it and talk about sponsorship, navigation and, um, and championing. And I guess the other aspect comes down to identity. And this may not be the best example to use, but we often talk in the UK about Margaret Thatcher and please put politics aside for the moment. Margaret Thatcher about being our first female prime minister in 1979. Many people criticized her for not doing enough for women in leadership, and women in politics. But Margaret Thatcher was so proud of one other fact as well. She was the first scientist in number 10 Downing Street. She loved science. She was a chemistry graduate and she was so proud of the fact that she was the first scientist prime minister in the UK. We've got far too many vapid PPE types, no, uh, no reference to current prime minister. But we have far too many economists, social scientists. But we never had a scientist until Mrs. Thatcher came in and the daughter of a grocer from less privileged backgrounds. And like I said, putting politics aside, what she was able to do well, two things. One, 
she was only put forward for a winnable seat by a gentleman, Bertie Bulch, who recognised the difference of this person who happened to be a woman, who happened to be a scientist, who happened to come from a different social background, and he took a risk on her and helped her navigate to a first winnable, winnable seat. And where, from people who have a far closer association have told me, folk like Margaret Thatcher are able to play different elements of their identity, whether it's we are a grandmother, whether it's the family side, whether it's the hard political side, whether it's the science side. We've all got so many aspects to our identity and we tend to focus on one part. We're a scientist, we're a certain gender, but try to look under the layers at the other parts of our identity and find commonality with those who may be different to you, those who may be challenging to you, challenging to you is where the real magic, and I keep using the word magic, I know, but that's where the real magic happens. So I think those are two aspects that might help the, the questioner here. Yeah, thanks, Dash. And, and I think, you know, naming sponsorship and, and support, I think it's really, um, you know, something else to bring into relationships because we often, you know, don't look at relationships in that, that sort of broad way. And I think in the workplace, you can have all sorts of different kind of relationships, um, you know, that can support you. And that's what we're really sort of speaking to today is nurturing all those different kind of relationships, the relationships with yourself, with others, you know, with, with um, you know, those who are um, senior to you or those who are, you know, coming up the ladder. And it's about building all those different kind of relationships to, to bring your insight, to bring your wisdom, um, you know, for us all to come, come together so that we feel like we are in this together and we are, you know, trying to, to find results for the common good. So um, I'd love to see if there are any more questions. We've got about 10 minutes just before we wrap up. And um, Fash, I'd love to know if there's any hands up at the moment. Has anybody um, on the panel just got something that they want to kind of speak to at the moment while we're waiting for some questions that we haven't perhaps covered already? Um, I'd love to see if any, um, yeah, Pamela, do you want to jump in and then we'll come to you, Nish? I'm just reading through one question and I think was lost because it was, there's a lot of activity on the chat, which is fantastic. <laughs> um, I think Andrea, uh, I, I hope I'm not wrong, uh, asked the question around um, speaking about the distinction yeah. between networking and building relationships. Um, I can give my perspective, obviously, on how I see that. Also building on um, what Noosh mentioned a while ago when she said, you know, when you're, when you're networking, you have to be respectful, obviously, of, obviously, of the other person who's in front of you and, and, and set clear expectations and, you know, be very open and, and share what you're looking for. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll take a, a tiny step back and, and describe what I see the big, uh, the big common thing between the two and also the big difference. So I think that both uh, building relationships and networking have one thing in common, which is empathy. Um, having empathy and um, understanding that other people's time is as important as your time is, I think, is paramount. So that not only you show up as a human being and, and an honest person, but you also know that the other person on the other side has some specific needs and i think that the conversation is created in a better way if you have that if you make that assumption at the beginning if you are empathetic um the big distinction i would make at least in my case when i try to network or when i try to build relationships is that networking has a set of ground rules embedded in it which is um which means that both parties or in some cases one of the parties have a need and so you are honest about it and you're trying to find a solution either for yourself or for other people. And uh, most of the times there's a, a set and defined time to network. And it can be at an event, it can be um, at a situation where there is an understanding that there's a common objective. When it comes to building relationship, I think it's, you know, you go much deeper and much broader. Um, and usually you create a relationship by giving instead of getting. So you put yourself into a situation where you are happy to dedicate some time to others, you're happy to just listen instead of speaking, and therefore you create a connection. You throw this kind of ball of yarn to the other person and the other person holds it and then creates this kind of um, 
surrounding where you're both safe in a safe space and you share and you enrich each other. And that stops there. That relationship can create more networking. That relationship can cause something to happen and can bring you back a lot of things when you need them. But at the time when you create a relationship, you don't necessarily have a need. It's more like for the purpose of connecting with someone else. Thanks, Paola. And um, Lush, did you want to pick up on, um, on that same question? Yeah, Paola, I spotted that one too. And I thought it was really great because there might be some introverts watching. And when it comes to networking and you aren't able to be face to face, it goes back to that point of trying to find those points of light that call to you that you want to maybe read the books that they've written or just follow their career to see where there might be some um, values aligning. And that's why you're drawn to them. And at that point, you don't have to go to the point of building a relationship. You're just curious about discovering what part of that facet of that human or network or community or organization is why you're drawn to them. And I think that's where that self aspect that Lisa, you mentioned today is a big part of understanding your why um, and sense making why and, and not even not, I guess what it is, is like, there are so many unknowns in the space sector and space community right now. And it is literally with things like the launch today it's going to be exp exponential but the science and you know space community have been saying that for generations since the 60s and in deep technology this is often the way that all of these different magical things happen to take from Dashan's vocabulary magical things happen with unexpected circumstances and I think that ties in so beautifully with Paola what you were saying where you know it's building that relationship now we don't know where it will be fruitful later but it's taking that time to pause and just listen. And I think sometimes I'm guilty of this as I talk a lot, but I don't always listen. So I've personally really worked on listening. Um, and for me with Nort, it's all about joining the dots between technology and people and innovation. And so for me, meeting new people that help enrich that kind of mindset for me, I don't know how that will be fruitful in the future yet, but I have time for everyone because I'm, curious to see what you're working on and I think there's so much value in sometimes just taking a step back and maybe tapping into a network that's not your usual just because you know what will happen it might not be for you and you'll just leave an event or you know switch a podcast off it's it's okay but just challenge yourself to try something in a different environment that you may not have 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 kind of um look to before and I did that with space and I've, I've managed to be okay with it and as much as I still suffer from imposter syndrome I found my own place and I've built my own foundation so you must never feel that there's no space for you in a room or at a table or within a network or a community if there isn't one you build it and people will come so yeah that's all I wanted to say on that yeah thanks for picking up on that and I, I love that you brought in curiosity and I think you know for all of us whether it's relationship building, whether it's networks, um, you know, that we're trying to develop and there's a, there's a kind of, you know, key purpose for it. My, my sense is it's about being curious. It's about wanting to build that connection. And my feeling is, um, you know, when you show up to any event, whether it's with um, a sort of end goal in mind or not, um, if you bring your, your sort of heart-centered self, then you're going to create much better relationships and I would I would always start any kind of network networking event with with focusing on the relationships first and foremost and I think that um, you know in some ways I know Paula explained it really clearly um, and I thought that was really helpful but but to my mind in some ways you know the two are very um, overlapping and there's actually you know when we when we show up to networking with with out such a key agenda and when it's more about building connections where it's more about being curious about each, each other you know the relationships will start to develop and then we don't know what that's going to lead to so I think there's you know we are all um, you know focused on, on getting support and getting to the next level and I think there's got to be a level of strategy to what we do we all haven't got unlimited resources but I think there is that um, beauty as well in, in as Nish was saying opening up to relationships and seeing where things might lead so um, that would just be my my sort of thought on, on that question as well which just um, you know just prompted that so um, let's see if we've got any any more questions coming up 
at the moment. So otherwise we'll, um, we'll bring things to a close. I'd just love everybody before we, we sort of finish up just to um, sort of leave us all with, with one thing that, um, you know, coming back to the original um, sort of topic, nurturing great relationships to power business. What's the one thing um, that you would like to leave everybody with that um, you think is so important um, around nurturing great relationships and um, whether we follow the, the same sort of order that we did at the beginning or if everybody just wants to jump in with that, I'm, I'm very happy um, to go with the flow. So if anyone's got a, an answer to that. Ella, yeah, jump in. Yeah, so I, I can start. I think uh, it was already said, yeah, but we, we need to start with giving. Yeah, and this is, yeah, giving our time, giving our knowledge, our expertise. And at the same time, we, we shouldn't finish on this. Yes, we, we should also learn and we should also open up and give ourselves the permission to, to have the needs and to actually to voice the needs. So, yeah, we are giving, but also at a certain moment, we are also asking for this, what we need, and we are, we are asking for the support. And I think in this way, we, we, we're creating this kind of mutual connections where everybody is actually happy because also people who are giving to us, they feel appreciated and they feel that they do something good. Yeah, so let's not, let's not withstand with asking for for this what we need right thanks Ella that's gorgeous thank you who would like to, to follow that okay next um I would the word curious is yeah. coming to my head um so I think be curious it's very easy to to assume that we know people, we, we make judgments. Um, it's so important not to make judgments, to be curious and to really try to find out a bit about people that you meet, just to ask questions, to have time to listen, um, uh, you know, to, to uh, diversity and difference is intriguing and interesting and it opens our minds. And it's so important to be curious. Um, we can you know, develop incredible new relationships that we would never otherwise have if we're not curious. So that's, that's my contribution on that point. Thank you. Yeah, I love that. Great point. Thank you. Who would like to follow? I'll yeah. happily follow that if, oh. if you'd like. Sorry. I'll, I'll, get, I'll have to give way to Paula. No, oh, no, no. Go ahead, my dear. Don't worry. I'll wait. <laughs> no problem. Um, no, following on from um, Rebecca. And um, Rebecca, absolutely, you know, being curious, to be curious, to ask all those questions and to value the answers that come from it. Dissension is not disloyalty. A lot of the work I do with boards is, is to be clear that dissension is not disloyalty. It is to express different opinion, it is to learn, it is to build on that initial curiosity. So a very short story, one of my clients, a large, quite well-known ad agency, um, had a wonderful scheme to, to expand their talent pool, and it could be summed up with this one catchphrase, we want people who are so wrong that they're so right. And they just found the most outrageous talent that you know, a rational left-brain person looking at would not have ever considered. But the results, and I'm happy to talk about this privately, but the results from that, the finding this talent, these talents that would otherwise have not been considered because they were so wrong, actually led that they were so right and took the creative process um, in a different direction from many, many other clients of that particular agency. So yes, absolutely be, be curious, be accepting of that curiosity and the, the responses you get and be absolutely comfortable with that discomfort. Sorry, three things. That's okay. That's a strong point. They're, they're good three things, so you can bring them in. Thanks for that, Dash, and appreciate that. And uh, Paula, I'd love to go to you next. Yeah, perfect, perfect lead way for what I wanted to say, which is um, just a couple of words. Show up in your true self and experience serendipity. 
because it can really lead to amazing things you would have never thought would be possible. So just be there and experience the serendipitous moment. Gorgeous, thank you. And uh, Pamela or Ella? Oh, we've heard from Ella, sorry, Pamela. Yeah, I'm gonna to try to talk the, the gardeners in the back blowing, so you might hear some noise. <laughs> but, um, but for me, what comes to mind is to not always have an agenda. Um, it's, it's not about what you want, and it's, it's, it's really getting to know that person, because I think there is the, like you said, Lisa, there is an overlap between networking and relationships. You can't truly form a good partnership until you build that trust. And one of the examples, when I was talking to somebody that wanted to do a referral, we had spent some time just talking about general things in our lives. And he goes, Pam, like, I feel like I know you. When I say I'm going to refer you, it's not just, oh, okay, I know you as BBS. Like I can say, I know Pam Gardner um, because we had a bit of a deeper conversation. It wasn't just about the business. And so he felt more trust and more comfortable with me afterwards. Thanks, Pam. And I think, um, you know, I love all those shares. And I think for me, you know, it's the listening as well that I think is so important when we're building relationships to, to ask the questions, to be curious, and then to listen for the answers and see what we can hear in that, that answer um, that can then spark another question and we build that up. And I think, you know, um, I would just like to, to thank everybody um, for giving up their time this evening and for um, responding to the relationships that, uh, that, that we have built. Because, um, you know, in, in all of our lives, you know, when we've got these relationships, when we get to know each other, we can learn from each other, we can support each other, we can make life, when it's challenging, so much easier. So, um, you know, whether it's personal or whether it's professional, I think relationships are at the heart of, of everything we do. And seeing it from all the different perspectives and you know seeing how it can fit into our workplaces i think has been a really interesting um and and enlightening sort of conversation so i hope everybody who's joined us live has agreed with that and and has found that the same so um you know do share your takeaways do share um pop in the comments just something that's resonated for you we always read the chat afterwards so it's great to see that and yeah ella did you want to pick up on something yeah, we need to hear, I would love to hear from Nash. Her last share. Honestly, I feel like it's all been said, but just something that um, Darshan said about being uncomfortable. I think especially right now, we're sitting with a lot of things that are making us all very uncomfortable. And so a lot of people we might be talking to are also going through that and that's quite unifying. So bringing in the empathy and empathizing with people in this time, because how we meet like this may be very different in whatever new world we're gonna be coming out of. And it's just to remember and be kind because we're all going through things, you know, behind the scenes and, and this is a unique time. Um, and it's something that might bond us all, you know. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's kind of just be kind to people when you meet them. Yeah. Thank you. You're on mute. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm on mute there. So I was just going to say thank you, um, Ella, for, for mentioning that. Sorry, it's, it's like the Brady Bunch here with um, sort of everyone's different faces and, and working out who I've gone to and I have, who I haven't. But hopefully um, everybody's heard from um, everybody and, and you've all felt that you've been able to um, be involved in, in the conversation. It's, a, it's interesting, this is only my second panel that I've been sort of facilitating in a, a group environment like this in a, a live sort of conversation. So I hope, um, you know, it's, it's been interesting to listen to um, and has worked for you all as panellists. So I'd love to get feedback on that afterwards. Do share with me how it's been. We've got another panel um, taking place tomorrow morning at um, 10 o'clock tomorrow, and that will be around the art of disruption. And um, that will certainly be a really interesting panel that we're going to be having. But Leadership Redesigned um, is almost coming to a close. It's, um, you know, been a, an amazing kind of eight, nine days, but we've got a few more things up our sleeve. We've got, um, as I say, the panel tomorrow 
and then we've got another bonus speaker coming out and then we've got potentially something else coming out on Friday. So do keep, um, keep connecting with us, do keep sharing what you're thinking of the events and uh, yeah, thank you for your company this evening and thank you once again for everybody on the panel who's joined me tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you, you're welcome. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you.